fäller ges av utdelning till kvitteringsmålet. Och går de högt när Lisbeth vänder ryggen till. Vi är också Nord. Weyman! Otto Weyman! Hi everyone, back again for another video. I'd just like to have a look at this goal here as I think there are some interesting points to analyze in this situation. So just to set the scene, as you probably saw, right now the ball is with the red team here and they are heading this way. It ends up being the white team who scores this goal. So I'll just move it through a little bit further. I'm going to start by analyzing the white team and then I'll move on to the red team. Okay, so starting from here, the white team seems to be playing a man-on-man -man defense here. I'll draw the pairs in. They're fairly obvious. You can see that all of the players have a pair. There's also another pair off camera down here to the left. And it is the speed with which this player here closes the gap on the red player who has just received the ball and puts that red player under pressure, which leads to the red team having to play the ball backwards because this red player does not want to have their possession threatened. And that ultimately puts the red team in a position where they can be pressed by the white team. So just wanted to note that man-on-man -man defense. So I'll just move it forward a little bit further here. The next point I'd like to make about the way the white team have played this is that they choose a really good opportunity to press the red team. You can notice here that now this player has the ball. They don't necessarily have it under control. You see as the clip goes on that it's actually bouncing and they're still trying to control the ball. And the ball and the red team's momentum are heading back towards their own net. On top of that, this red player here who has the ball, they are facing their own net or essentially the back of the court. So that is a great opportunity to press because it means that their vision, the ball carrier's vision, is limited. They can't see up the court and they can't see passes that will progress the ball. They can only see their own net and they are heading towards the back of the court. So their passing options and their vision is only going to shrink as they approach the boards behind their net Further to that, because the ball is bouncing, the player has to look down more to get the ball under control. So it just makes it a great opportunity to press. So I'll just move it a little bit further forward. The last thing I'd like to say about the white team is they do a really good job of beating the red team into their own half. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's just count numbers here. We have three red players and we have four white players. And this is inside the red team's half and essentially around the red team's net. So the white team have done a really good job of beating the red two highest players, their forwards, back into the red team's own half. And you can see the white team really control this central area of the court with their positioning and the speed that they have pressed with here. So that makes it very hard for the red team to, to get out. And it also makes it very dangerous for the red team to lose the ball because essentially the red team have no one in the middle of the court to block any shots or disrupt any shooting apart from the goalie who's their last line of defense. So really nice work by the white team to have most of their players press and get up and control the red team's zone so well. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the red team now. Um, so to do that, I'm going to take it back a little bit. So starting from here, you can see that this player has the ball and they're about to play a lifted pass over to their teammate here at the back. Now playing a lifted pass here is not necessarily a problem, but it does end up creating problems for the red team because it's very hard for this player to control the ball. So another option they may have had was to play the ball straight down the boards into the corner somewhere and allow this player here to have to chase after it and retrieve it. Now, I'm not saying that this pass by the red player was a bad pass. They can't know 
how it's going to transpire with the white team pressing so aggressively and it ending up in a goal against the red team. They can't know that from this position on the court. But something interesting to ponder is maybe perhaps whether they should have just thrown the ball to the corner and allowed this guy to chase after it at full speed rather than having to control the bobbling ball at essentially a you know 60 or 70% of their top speed. The next point is the converse of the last point I made about the white team, which was the white team did such a good job of, of getting up quickly into the red team's zone and applying pressure. The red forwards really should have done a better job of coming back and helping. They needed to have at least one more player come back so that they were not outnumbered. And they just needed to be more disciplined on the back check there. So you can never guarantee that that's going to prevent the goal but it certainly would have helped to have someone come back and make the numbers even. Okay, so the next point about the red team is that they don't have any players in front of the net here in case something goes wrong. So I mentioned this when I was talking about the white team. Now, personally, I would always like to see a defensive player in front of the defensive net in situations like this in case something goes wrong. They can be there to disrupt a shooter, to disrupt a pass, or potentially just to be another body in front of the net so they can block the shot and assist the goalie. Now, if we continue with that preference to have a net front defender, the question then arises, who should it be? Should it be this player over here? Should it be this player over here? Or should it be another player arriving on the back check? I would like to hear your thoughts on this, so please leave a comment. I'm going to give my preferred option or solution to this problem, but it is by no means the correct solution or the only solution. It's just what I think, but I'm really interested to hear what everyone thinks about this because I thought about this situation a lot and the solution was not immediately obvious to me. So with all that said, my preferred solution to this would be that this player here becomes the net front player. I think that that would have a couple of outcomes. It would force this white player here to need to make a decision as to whether they were going to continue with their press all the way down behind the red team's net or stay with this player that's coming into the middle to take them away as a passing option. So let's go through both of those eventualities. If this white player here stays with this red player as they come into the middle, then what will happen is it will create more space on this side of the court and it will allow this player here to continue in this direction, the direction that they're already moving and they already have speed in and the direction in which they're receiving the most pressure. And they will be able to come out on this side of the net and from here they'd be able to make a pass or continue to dribble the ball. Now let's have a look at the other option. If this player here continued with their press as this player swung into that net front position. We can actually see what would happen here. Uh, so I'll just take the clip forward because this player does actually go all the way to the boards almost. Now you can see that there's a passing lane in here. Now, had this player been in the middle, they would have been an option to receive the ball through that passing lane. In addition to that, if this player had taken a few more steps this way, it would have pulled this white player here along with him and it would have increased the distance in that passing lane, making the, the pass easier to execute. So, my preferred option would be to have this player in front of the net, as I believe that there are a couple of different ways that that could play out 
which would still allow the red team to escape pressure. But let me know what you think in the comments. I'm interested to hear about that. Okay, so the last question I have here is really more of a conceptual question. So normally we think about teams that are attacking and defending in terms of who has the ball and possession of the ball and who does not. The team which has the ball is the attacking team and the team which does not is the defending team. But in this situation, the red team would be classed as the attacking team, but they certainly don't look like the attacking team to me and they definitely are not the team that end up scoring the goal. So potentially there's a more useful definition of attacking, which is multifactorial. Uh, you know, maybe you need to consider who has the ball, but also which direction the ball is moving, where on the court that is, and how much pressure the ball carrier is receiving in order to determine who's actually attacking and who's defending. Now that may sound like a matter of definition that doesn't really have any impact, but I would argue that potentially in player development, if these players here recognized that they were the defending team, perhaps they would have been quicker to cover this net front area or to provide an option to their teammate who is under pressure, rather than thinking, it's okay, we'll be able to get out of this and attack. Likewise, perhaps if the Fords realized that they were the defending team, they would have been quicker to come back and take care of their defensive responsibilities and make sure that their teammates were not outnumbered in their own defensive zone. So that's pretty much it for this video. I'd really like to know what your thoughts are on this scenario. So I'm going to leave a comment with the questions below. Just reply to that comment with your analysis or your thoughts. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Fellow yes. Av utdelning till kvitteringsmålet. Då går de högt. Nej, Lisbeth vänder ryggen till. Vinner också Nord. Weyman! Otto Weyman!